What's going on everybody, it's Frito here for your Overwatch, and today I wanted to do a bit of a follow-up conversation to one of the most important things that we discussed with Jeff Kaplan in our interview with him at BlizzCon, Roll queue. The issue of quality of matchmaking games is something that can't get fixed immediately. It wasn't going to get fixed on that couch, just debating back and forth. And I know in the comment section, I saw a lot of the rebuttals, further rebuttals that we could go down. And in the space of that interview, there just wasn't really enough time to go down all the different paths that would be required to discuss the small intricacies of every little problem that stems up when you start to try to deal with matchmaking as an issue. But on our YouTube channel, I could just hit record and talk for as long as I want. So that's what I'm gonna do here. I wanna try to expand and develop these ideas in a bit more of a well-defined way and try to take that dialogue to the next step, especially taking into account this new bit of information peering behind the curtain about the worries that they have about a role queue as described by Jeff Kaplan and Aaron Keller, namely the idea that it would inherently force you into playing a certain character or role, maybe perhaps when you didn't want to, I have a rebuttal for that, but also this idea of forcing a meta. I think I also have counterpoints to that as well. The required reading for keeping up with the entire storyline of things we're going to be discussing here would be the two interviews we did with Jake. The second follow-up one, though, is even more important as it gets to the heart of what we think is lowering the quality of matches overall, and that is because we're in a system that rewards specialization, more players specialize anyway in order to game that system, but aside from that, most player skill sets are limited, no matter what their rank is. And because of this, when you get a random assortment of teammates, a big percentage of your success as a team depends on whether you have the required pieces and skill sets that can actually perform well. And because we're constantly dealing with this pressure and this internal cultural conflict, tensions are always high and a lot higher than I think they need to be because there isn't this structure in ranked play that guides it along towards it feeling competitive all of the time, or at least most of the time. And that word structure is what I'm gonna come back to in a further explanation, but for now, we'll move on. In order to try to remove that problem altogether, a role queue could do a lot. Now, Jeff Kaplan didn't seem too psyched about the idea and had a few criticisms, but also offered a solution for a looking for group system, which I think is amazing. I think it's a wonderful idea. With one major problem though, we don't have a system that you really can group up in. You can if you want to have the best quality matches, but it isn't a legitimate way to rank up, at least not to the higher ranks. If everyone grouped, yes, the group find would work because as long as if you're in a three, it can simply just match another equally skilled three against you. It doesn't have to play these games with like trying to account for the stack factor, but because everyone knows it's hard to group up, less people do it. It goes the other way. It's a disincentive. So if you're in a six, you're going to be like the only six at masters or something making for this to be doubly hard. So perhaps that could be a short-term solution just to try to inject some interest into the idea of grouping up, but as soon as those group numbers start to dwindle, we're just going to be back to the same issue we have now, where grouping is just not really an option to successfully climb the ladder, which is what most players want to do. Now, because of that, I think that's why the role preference queue is so important, because we need to somehow create a structure around the solo queue experience. Because if the culture isn't lean towards, you're gonna have to find a group if you wanna successfully climb the ladder. I mean, I'd be fine if that was the case, but it isn't, and it doesn't look like it's ever going to be that way. Then we're going to have to work around the system that's really designed to benefit small queue, which I think has to be preference queue. And with that, we get into the rebuttals that Jeff Kaplan and Aaron Keller gave us in our interview, which is that they definitely don't want to lock you in your hero role choice. So for instance, if they didn't have a, a category option for you to select upon Q and it just was based upon what you already played, that would then forever lock you into that hero that you only wanted to fill on anyway. But of course, my rebuttal to that was we sort of already have that culturally, where if you are consistently trying to fill pick on Rhine, everyone still expects you to play Ryan. But I don't think any of us expected for the preference system to work upon your play time. That's a different thing altogether. The preference system would be a selection 
of a role before you go into the matchmaking queue, and perhaps even a numbering system if you have multiple options that you're comfortable with. And then when you get assorted into a team comp, there's that structured expectation of these players in this queue prefer to play this immediately. I don't have to read their player card and do some sort of math of like, well, they have five hours in this hero, but if you combine all the rest of the hours they play, they're really a flex player. Okay, that's our flex. Looking over here, okay, okay we got a mercy main, and all the time in the hero selection, screen, we're kind of doing this meta game of trying to figure out, okay, what one tricks do we have? What one tricks do they have? What do I have to play? Am I allowed to play my favorite hero? Oh no, that's going to take his favorite hero. All of that can just get removed immediately if we're filled into lanes or buckets or categories or whatever you want to call them from the start. And when you plop into the line of player icons at the bottom, it indicates what people queued for immediately. You don't have to read their player card. You don't have to sort of guess and infer what they're good at. They're outwardly saying, I want to play this role. And that alone, we I think, fixes a ton of matchmaking problems immediately. You don't have to do this restriction idea that they're saying where certain heroes would be blocked off. No, let everybody play whatever they want. They could quote unquote, abuse this system, sure, but even if they could abuse it, the vast majority of time, I think this is just going to work. Now, let me try to give the motions of how this can work. The structure of this, I've heard all over the place. I've seen it in Reddit threads, forums, comment sections, YouTube videos. There should be a fill slash flex position. That you can just queue for outright. And I would be all over that. That means you play whatever hero, including hybrids. Very important. I think all hybrids that are one tricked or mained should just go into this fill slash flex idea because otherwise they get complicated. That includes the builders and the wonky weird supports that aren't dedicated healers. Those supportive, flexing, harder to categorize characters go in that bucket. And then we have dedicated healers, tanks, and damage. Those three. And since there's a six player team, there's sort of a very natural split that can happen where you could have three flex fill players on the team and three dedicated I want to play one of these core roles on the team. This way, I think we largely solve so many problems at once. One, we're finally rewarding flex players. They're going to have better queue times. Two, unfortunately, the builders and those other hard to classify characters are still getting in the mix. They're kind of getting sweeped in with the benefiting the flex role idea, but at least they're not taking up your dedicated healer slot. And when you get match made with the Sim one trick or the Torb one trick, at least you still have the core of a good team elsewhere and two other flex players that are flexing anyway. So you should be able to build a, at least a decent comp with that, even in those worst case scenarios. And even with them, I don't think they mathematically would come up as often as they do now because there's so many bad matchups now. There's so many like too many DPS, too many healers, too many niche picks. So many of those things happen at once right now where they'd be limited in this categorized system. Would there be other problems too? What if you have a Roadhog one trick in your tank slot? Well, you'd like to think a big percentage of the time you can get a good main tank out of one of the flex players. And this goes on and on. Most times this is going to find a solution to most team comp problems. Now, there's two very important follow-ups to this as well that you have to think about. One is Blizzard's concern about setting the meta. I'll get to that in a minute. And two, what do we do about players who actively abuse this system? They go into flex and aren't really flexible. Or they go into play healer and then they pick a non-healer. I think the healer example would happen less because that player would get a better queue time queuing under flex. So likely you'll see more abuses is there, but that's why it's one of your three flex slots that that problem can occur in. And kind of the same thing for any other abuse that could happen. More times than not, I think you'll find that the fill players can cover those blind spots since you have three of them. But even so, I do think it should be a reportable offense to abuse those cues. And if a player does it enough, then that's where the punishment system comes in. If you're queuing for healer, we don't want you to pick Sombra. That's not good enough, right? Queue for the other thing. You'll get a better queue time anyway. Going into that slot, assuming that you're gonna play a niche pick is kind of a rude way to go about matchmaking. And I think examples like that should be somewhat punishable as being uncooperative. It's a team game. We all know it's about building team comps and creating strategies that can overcome the opponent. Going into the healer queue and then picking Hanzo from the start is trolling behavior as far as I'm concerned. With this structure, there's sort of a cultural expectation of what you're supposed to be doing, and I think that's okay. And the reason why I think that's okay gets into my 
further rebuttal of the we don't want to set a meta issue. Here's my problem with that. Overwatch is too well balanced for Blizzard to say they don't want to set a meta. What does that mean? It sounds like a compliment. Well, it is. If Overwatch was so widely in balance that some characters simply could just carry their pants off and other characters were dead picks and there was like this massive knowledge curve as well as a massive skill output curve where if you reach a certain skill set, you just kill everything. Overwatch isn't balanced that way. It's distinctly balanced to work in a team environment. That's why the healers are so powerful and the tanks are so good. They're deemed required to play most of the time. Have we seen pro strategies where they've gone for DPS two healers? Yes, on some really niche examples on Assault, which is a game mode that sees wonky comps the most frequently. Was there a time where there was three supports and three tanks? Yes, but you could argue that one of the supports leaned into a damage dealer position. Zenyatta definitely was, and at least one of the tanks has to be considered a heavy damage dealer. Even in these wonky comps, there still is like a structure of a 2-2-2 two, two, two hidden inside because that's what Overwatch is. So with this being said, Blizzard has already set a meta, a general meta of that tanks and supports and damage dealers all work together. They all are really powerful and it has this community building, team focused, every skill set is viable in different scenarios. That's the playstyle we want. I think that's what every Overwatch player loves about the game. It's so inclusive to every style of play that any player can approach the game and have a meaningful impact on it from their position. And that philosophy at core has already developed a meta to exist. Did we want the three tank meta to be the only thing we could play? Well, no, it got patched out, right? Now, sometimes you can run three tank and you could still run three tank in the preference roll queue, by the way, as well as every other viable strategy I know of. But because Blizzard patched that down, obviously it didn't fit what they wanted the meta to be. You have to define the meta. They already have been defining the meta and the meta is the most playable game, right? That's the philosophy of it. And us as a community, I think have already responded with how we interact with this game. It's a push pull, right? Between the designers and how we come in and play the game at the various levels of play. It's been well-defined. Overwatch has been out for quite some time now. We have a really good grip of what the game is. We're all still learning it and we're still learning new things, but the core principles are there. And what is there is, I think, one of the most sound and beautiful eSport games ever. I truly mean that. Overwatch in motion, when the different strategies are being utilized to create different comps and the different styles of play are allowed to shine, that's wonderful. There might be small things we want to nudge here or there, small wrinkles or corners that we want to shave down, but the form of Overwatch is basically perfect in the center of it. And it'll keep getting molded over time, new bits will add in, but overall, the core of the game is great. We just want to play the core of the game more often, because right now, when you get a random assortment of elements, a big percentage of the time, we're not playing the game. And here's the way I thought to describe this. It's like another game that's shown that it's lasted through a long time, a sport that I grew up playing, not very well, of course, but I had fun playing as a kid, basketball. In a lot of communities across where I'm from, the United States, basketball is sort of the thing that everybody does. And there's never a basketball hoop that's too far away to make the game inaccessible to you. Everybody can play. Everybody can go to the playground and join in. To me, Overwatch is like that in video game form. And when you go down to the local park, whoever brought the best basketball, that's the one you use and teams get assorted and you just start playing. And the language of the game is well known. Everybody knows what you're supposed to be doing, what you're not allowed to do. And if you don't, you're gonna learn quickly because people are gonna teach you. And the culture of that naturally works itself out. But I have an analogy to how Overwatch gets played because I don't think it has that structure to define what we all should be doing. The Overwatch comparison to me is that instead of everyone playing around one ball, playing the game, instead it's like if every player wanted to play with their ball that they brought and they're all different shapes and colors and sizes and it's really hard to track the actual game going on. Hey, I wanna play with this ball. No, you wanna play with that ball. There's disagreements and two kids are in the corner fighting over one of the balls. I brought this, no, I brought it. And th those squabbles and that sort of 
extra metagame on top of that, I think kind of feels and illustrates what matchmaking can feel like for a lot of us. Kind of a mess. And without that structure to say, no, we're going to define the metagame of basketball saying that there's going to be one ball, everyone play around that one, and we all just assume that that's the case because that's what all the games do, that's what all the pros do, that's what everyone else does. Let's just do that. It makes the most sense for the game. Let's all agree that that's how basketball should be played. I think the same goes for Overwatch with this leaning towards a roll queue system. I know it's going to require Blizzard to quote, set the meta in a way, but I think it's obvious to most of us that that already is the case. The meta has already been set and it's great. The game is great. We just want to play the game, right? We don't want to play the chase around all the other balls and problems that you could possibly deal with on the court. I hope that makes sense. And if you're more of a football or soccer for us here guy, you can translate it to that as well. I'm sure it makes just as much sense in that analogy, but that's the point I want to get to. Whether it is this three flex, one of each category, roll preference queue, or something else, I think Blizzard has to come down and set something for us to all follow as a community. I personally think that idea we mostly all agree with anyway, so if it was instituted immediately, I don't think there'd be major complaints. But that's where the rubber hits the road, right? It's easy for me to sit here and say, I want this now, but they have to go develop it, right? And as Aaron Keller and Jeff Kaplan have said, this is something that they debate internally. They are very well in tune with the game. I know this. I'm sure they may have even heard a lot of this feedback that I'm giving here today because I've heard it. I'm echoing sentiments that I've heard around the internet about Overwatch. So what I hope though, is that we can move towards making this a reality. I think Blizzard is really trying to be respectful to the majority of the community. No, scratch that, all of the community. They don't wanna leave any small minorities out whether they're the one trick players or lower ranks, higher ranks, whatever, they want to listen to everyone, which makes them very reluctant to be strict with a certain rule set. But with that being said though, I think we can all agree that the game would benefit with a bit of structure. What do you guys think? Very complicated issue, I know, but this is one that we're very passionate about and we think could really push Overwatch into being a much more fun game for the community. What do you think about these ideas? Do you have any suggestions of your own? Leave them in the comment section. Let's get a bit of a conversation going. And with that, be sure to thumbs up other posts that you agree with so that we can sort of help curate these ideas to the top of our comment section. If you enjoyed the video and you found it useful, please leave a like. It really does help us out and lets us know that you're enjoying the content. If you haven't already, please subscribe because we upload each and every day. So you're gonna wanna hit the bell icon so that you get notified when our videos go live. Link to the description is our Twitter where we tweet out news, updates, dank memes. That's been it for me. I've been Frito for your Overwatch. I'll see you guys next time.